Now, today, we are going to focus on today's feature is cost management. Okay, so we're going to be focusing on a few things. Okay, I do apologize, but let me quickly admit this few people. Okay, so today we're going to be focusing on how to duplicate a course, also how to set up specialization, and how do we actually clone a, a structure, and how do we set up intake dates. Okay, so let me quickly just make sure that we have everyone. Okay, cool. All right. So without further ado, let's us quickly kick start. How do we duplicate a course? Now, you might ask, why do I even want to duplicate a course? Um, for very for various different reasons. But um this is one of our most asked questions, if I can say it, um from our help support team. So a lot of the time people want to know, can I actually create another course that is duplicated, you know, same as other. Um, a common reason why is um, maybe says that this course we are operating, we're offering it um, both full-time and part-time. They do exactly the same thing, except that the duration of the course could be different. So how can I manage it in RTO Manager? All right. Another, another popular reason is um, we could be running exactly the same course, but for two different ends, you know, two different streams. So can we do that? Yes, we can multi we can do we can duplicate the cost like that. Okay. So how do we duplicate a cost? So in order for you to have two of a similar cost, we have to duplicate the cost so that um it looks like that is two costs in the system. Okay. So National code, everyone would have recognized national code. This is the code that we pull from training.gov. Okay. So this is the code that we cannot change and because it actually holds all the course details in there. Okay. But course code is actually a system code, is our system code. So this is the code that we can change. So the way we duplicate a course is we use the same national code that we pull from training.gov, insert it as a new field, and then we make a variation with the course code, the course name, and whatever details that is listed in the course field. Okay, let me quickly toggle to my screen and we'll take you through the steps. So let's go into course, go under course subject, course and course, sub, uh, course under course. Okay, so I have previously created a course a generic course, Dipl uh, Diploma of Information Technology. Okay, now I wanted to clone this course, I mean to duplicate this course, so that it has a second uh, variation to this particular course. How do I do that? I just, let me quickly copy the national code. Go into Add New Course. Convert this to VET. Insert my course code in there. Does everyone know that this, what this little green icon do? Okay, this little green icon actually helps you to populate a lot of fields. It actually pulls out all the relevant information that is collated from training log, God, and you don't have to manually fill them in. Okay, especially this part that admit, a bit missed data. So once you click that, a lot of fields has been populated. All right, I'm not going to fill in any course, cry course code. So now, because I'm, I'm duplicating this course, I'm going to give it a different name, okay, and a different code. So in this case, I'm going to call it um, CT, okay, because I'm going to call the, call, change the course name to communication. 
technology. So this is my new course name. In terms of duration, it could be exactly the same as the original course. I set it up as 52 weeks, or I can change the variation. If, say, I'm changing this course to a part-time course, instead of 52 weeks, it would be 104 weeks. So I doubled the time. This is where you can do the variation um, to the original course, all right? And then delivery type, maybe my communication technology is only going to be delivered to international students only. So see, this is where you will decide. And in terms of internet, in terms of tuition fees, so the original course I put it as ten thousand. So in terms of tuition fees over here, maybe I can say they are going for eight thousand. Okay, and then. If I cater for domestic students as well, do they get it cheaper or they pay the same price? Okay, so we also have a question before saying that same cost, but the fees might be a little bit different in terms of overseas students onshore and offshore. So how do we cater for that? Same, same, same uh, resolution, create another cost, but this time around in terms of tuition fees, you can do the variation there. Okay, so these are the few examples that we will that we will go in and create. Why reason why we will create a duplicate cost? Of course, there is ten thousand different reasons out there, but this is the way we do it in RTO Manager. Okay, and then we just fill in the maximum time, and then I'm gonna start this course on the twenty fourth. Okay, everything else is pretty much the same. I'm gonna leave it as it is, and then just click record. So, oh voila, you see, I have duplicated the course. Okay. Now, once we duplicate the course, subject wise, if they are exactly the same course, the same, then that means that all the subjects would probably be the same. So, if you have already created them in this subject list, then you don't have to worry. Okay. We can quickly then jump into course subject. Okay, so if I toggle back to my slides, so very simply, we have already duplicated the course with the necessary, with the new course code and the new course name. Okay, the next on our agenda, we want to talk about specialization. Many people actually ask, how do we set up specialization in RTO Manager? Okay, very simply, let me quickly show you. To set up specialization, we just go into course under course subject. Okay, over here, choose that. Choose the selected course. In this case, I'm choosing, I'm using my original course, information, Diploma of Information Technology. Okay, so I have set up a few, I have already gone in there. To say I define my course template, okay, so my course structure, I have added or linked all these subject units to my course. So now I want to define my specialization. How to do that? Click here, manage specialization, okay. You can click here to set up a different specialization. You can set up as many different uh, specialization as, as you like. Okay, so depending on how, how big or how long um, your course is. So once you set up, for example, over here, I set up a cybersecurity, which is my specialization for this, uh, this particular course. And then once I set up the name, I can click on this icon to add what units make up this specialization. Okay, so I've added two. I can click on here and notice that over here, when you select the subject, it will only select the subject that you set up as elective. It won't give, not because you have put in 10 different or, or 15 different units in linked to this course, and every unit can be specialization. Whatever that is called will be called, meaning every subject will have to, or everyone will have to do that, um, these units in order to pass the course. But in order of specialization, you can only be, you can only be doing a certain amount of elective. So in this case, I'm going to add this. Add this two unit 
to my specialization. Okay, so this will form my specialization. If I have a longer unit list, all right, and, and if I have, say, maybe 10, 15, 20 different electives in here, and I can go in and say, instead of cyber security, I can put in um, uh, info technology specialized, all the different, different variation in here, I can set it up just by going in here to add the new uh, variation. Okay, so now, once I set this all up, this is a very high level. We set it in a in the very first stage courses and all that. So after we set it up, where do we where will we get to see where will we get to see the specialization? How do we know that this person has had specialization? Or this student has had specialization to their units? Okay. So let me bring up this screen. If I put it in the slideshow, it might be easier for everyone to see. Okay. So if we look over here, once we have set up specialization and a student has been enrolled, we can then go drill into the student um, profile under, under the course information tab, if you have remembered, the course information icon in the student profile section. Once you click in there, you will see course specialization being selected. It's denoted here, okay? And it also tells you in terms of the course template, we have set it up, right? So that's one place to see. The other place is over here under the results. In the results, once you click into the results icon, at the very top of the summary page, you will see the course specialization listed down here as well. Okay. You might also ask, so, okay, I'm stepping, I'm jumping the gun here. We have, we're already gone all the way into student profile. So, but how do I set this up? Because this is the first question I ask myself. How do I actually set up the specialization? Like, so that this student actually have a specialization. Okay. That's, this is, you can, there's two ways of doing. So during the application process, so when you are entering the application for your student under offer and offer mat, um, apply online by admin, in step three of the application, if this course has been set up with specialization, you will see that there is a choice for you to choose. If you have a list of a few different specialization, then obviously there will be a few tick boxes op um, appears down here, okay, or across. So you then just go into tick. If the student has selected to be cybersecurity as a specialization, you just go in and tick this box, okay? Then if we say we still miss, we have not set this up during our application process, you can also go in and set up during the offer management process. So that means that this application has all been submitted and is now gone into the offer stage. So under offer and offer manage, okay, for each student line, you just need to go in and click on this tool icon, the spanner and screwdriver icon. If you click that, it will bring up the summary page of the student. So scroll all the way to the bottom where you see the course detail, Click on the pen, the paper icon, the pa paper and pen icon. It will take you into this page, and this is where you will select the cyber icon, um, the cyber security or the specialization. Okay. Having to say that, let me quickly show you in a real format. Okay. So if I go into offer and say offer manage. Okay, so for example, if this particular student, I just click onto here. Okay, so it takes me to this page. I just need to scroll all the way down here under enrollment details because this is where the students are, where the course details are. Click on this pen and, well, I should have called it pencil and paper icon. Okay, and it takes you to this page. And this is where you can select, select or unselect for that matter. 
Okay, so if you have set up a few different specialization for this particular course, it will be listed down here. So then after your negotiation with the student, you can then set select which specialization you want to select. Just click the box, scroll down and click save. Okay, so this is where you are adding the specializations from the offer management page. Okay, so very quickly, if I say I just gone into here and set up a new application, so I'm inputting a new application. Okay, I'm going to just very quickly run by this page. Okay, so I'm in step three, and now I'm selecting a course. Okay, see how specialization is now listed down here? So we just need to check the box, and it will then reflect that this, this student will now be enrolled into this course with a specialization of cybersecurity. Okay, so there's a few places where you can, there's two places where you can add in your specialization, and there's also two places where you can see that this specialization has been added. Okay, so if I quickly go back to my, to my slide. Okay, the next slide, I just want to quickly show you, I just want to show you that once we have specialization added, this is a sample certificate. Okay, it actually shows that um, for this particular course, this student have a major, have a special uh, specialization of cybersecurity. Now, having to show you this an example, we also have to bear in mind that this does not come automatically. Okay, we all know that our certificate needs to be templated. So if you really want your specialization to appear on your certificate, then you have to contact our support team so that they can then go in and work a new template for you to add in your your major your specialization. Okay, this is just an example to show you how the certificate could look like. If you say that, you know, I like the layout of this certificate and I like my certificate to reflect this information, then please reach out to our help support team and they will help you to um, set up and customize a new certificate template. Okay, so this is specialization. Okay, now After specialization, next we want to talk about is cloning a, a course structure. You might again want to ask, why do I even want to clone a course structure? Okay, do we actually, does any one of you know that we actually have this function of cloning a course structure? Maybe if I can see a raise of hands. Anyone? Or even type in the chat, yes, no. No? Nah. <laughs> okay, so we do have this option of cloning a course template. All right, so we all know that we after we have linked all the units and um, to all the units to the course, we then have to go in and set up a course template whereby it will collect you know, or to show what, how many, how many core units and how many elective units this subject or this course will hold, right? Then we will want to say that after that, how do we want that? We will create a template to say once we have created the course, uh, the course template, then we have to structure. So meaning we are attaching all the different units into this structure, okay? Once we set this up, if you are, if you're never going to change your 
offers of courses, you might not need to worry about it because this is kind of like a once-off thing. You have set it up and you just forget about it. But we never know. One of the common features is some units might be superseded. Okay, so if a unit has been superseded and your course itself has um, maybe 20 different units in there, core and elective added. So if one of the units has been superseded, that means that this template cannot be used anymore. So the norm way to do is, okay, I'll just go in and create another template. But imagine you have 20 units in there. That means that you have to relink all 20 units to this template. Okay, that's going to take a bit of time, a bit, a bit painful. Okay, but with this clone template, essentially what you do is you actually say, yep, I will clone this template so that I'll have another different different template created. And over there, I can go in and change the superseded units. Okay. So after that, we can then, you know, with the old ones, you can either leave it there or we can, you know, deactivate it. Okay. There could also be another, another reason why we want to clone the template is because um, I know there are some courses that might have 20 core units, but only um, 10 with 10 or 5 elective units. So if you say that maybe one of the elective or one of the core units that has again been superseded or has been removed, then what are you going to do? Again, you have to go and create a whole new template of it. So with, clone, with this fun cloning function, it saves you a bit of work, okay? So if I just quickly get rid of this. And come back to my screen. Okay, if I just go into course template, for example, over here I've created my, I've gone into add, and I created an information technology, a cyber security, okay, a template. So when I come into here, this little icon says set unit structure. Okay, so I've already set my unit up for this particular template. All right, so these are all my core and my electives. So for example, if I want to, if this unit has been, this particular unit has been superseded, I just need to cl click this clone template. And all you need to do is just to give it a name. So in this case, I've already cloned another template, another structure template that's called InfoTech2. Okay, I just give it a name and click clone now. So it will then give me a clone of Infotech Cybersecurity. So from here, I can then go, just simply go in here. Okay, if I need to change my template, as in maybe this, we need to add another, another core unit. So I can change it to four core, and then four elective. I can then set this to default, or I just want to set this as active, depending on how you want to use. I'll just update. And then once I, because I've added a, added an extra unit, so I can then go in here, click on this. If I have if I have already set up, so obviously you have to do one step. You have to go add that you that subject first. Then the subject will be listed down here, and you can then go in and say, you know, I want, I'm adding it as a core and add unit. So this would have an entirely different cost structure and cost template. So when you are Processing the application, you can then also go in and select which course template you're using. So that way the student will be then assigned or enrolled into the correct course with the correct course template. So they will be doing the exact courses or units that has been listed provided to get qualification for this course. Okay, so we'll talk about we talk about um, duplication of course, specialization, 
clone we clone a structure. The next is last but not least, after we have done all that, then we also need to set up intake dates. So this is pretty straightforward. There's no um, hidden features about it. We just simply need to come in here to go into intake dates. Select if you have multi campus set up, select your campus. If not, then it will always be defaulted to that one campus. Change it to bad courses if you have if you have other courses listed, then you can either change all courses if all your courses start and finish at the same time. But if you have courses that have different intake dates, I would select I would suggest that you use select course. And then over here, say I'm going to select, say for example, for this particular course for communication technology, I'm going to call it um, Infotech. Okay, and my intake date would be, say I want it to start in June, the third. Okay, so for both international and domestic. And I just simply click add, go through and make sure all the intake dates and course finish dates is correct, referring to the same template. Okay, and just click confirm. Okay, so you can see from here, I've set up my intake dates. All right, so this would be the end of today's feature. Um, I think we can open up with the stop, stop share and open up for some, let's have a look if we have some questions. Okay. Hello, I've got a quick question. Yes. It's just about the intake dates. Mm -hmm. um, what's what? I, I kind of know what they're for, obviously, but we don't have intake dates set up. We do that when we enroll. Can you just explain to me the benefits of, of having the intake dates predefined? Okay, just very quickly. Um, when we define intake date, so essentially you can set up how many times you're going to enroll student or or start the course. Okay, so say example you're going to do you're going to take in example um, intake student every quarterly. So if you already set up that quarter, then when you are in when you are processing your application, you can very clearly see that at this particular date, this is where your course will start. Does it answer your question? Yeah, yeah. I think I think probably it's not been set up before because we do intakes every four weeks. Yeah. So, okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. So I think this pretty much come to the end of my session. Um, if you could still have any questions, I will leave the session on for a little bit longer so you can type in your question in the chat, and um, we will we will pull out the questions and reply to you after the session. Okay, so thank you everyone. Thank you very much for coming to our first ever Spotlight feature session. Hopefully um, my, my features actually gives you a bit more information and helps you along with, the, with your working with RTO manager. So if you have any question, please by any means contact our help desk. Okay, and um, so let me quickly share my help desk information. So can you see my screen? All right. So you can, you know, obviously check out what we can, what Mesh Group has offer. Use our web link or call us on one three hundred five four three five one two. So this will take you to our help desk to lock a query, or you can send an email to support at meshgroup.com.au and um, our help desk colleague will reply to you as soon as possible. Okay.